YouTube, what is good? So a little while ago, I posted a video where I did some product photography from home. Y'all loved that video and I have more product photography to do. So I figured I'd make a part two to that video for y'all. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of Nikes that we got to shoot today. So today's video is going to be a little faster paced than the last video because I only have an hour and a half to shoot these photos, edit them and get them sent off to the client. Now this isn't something new to me. I've worked on deadlines before, but today I want to try to maximize this time limit and see how creative we can get in a relatively short amount of time. At the end of today's video, I'm going to give y'all some tips and insight into how I got started in this whole thing, what you can do to start trying to find lifestyle photography, product style photography clients, and some tips on how to price it and all that stuff. Stuff. So let's stop wasting time on this intro. Let's get started. The first pair is going to be these. We're going to shoot these all in the house and all in my office and just try to use stuff I have laying around to enhance the photos and uh, highlight the products and make them look cool for social media, emails, and for website if they end up there. So let's get it. Step one actually is I got to clean up all these boxes because that's a problem. Step two is to get some props. So I'm thinking for these blue shoes, we will use some blue jeans right here in this denim jacket. So we lay the shoes on top of some denim. That'll probably look really good. Yo, so I'm finishing up the edit on today's video and real quick, I wanted to announce that the first exclusive Patreon video is live. This is a video where I show you exactly how I edit one of my photos on Instagram. It's actually this photo right here. We go step by step and with that video, there's a downloadable tone curve. So you can click on the attachment on that post, download the exact same tone curve that I used and apply it to your images potentially if they're in a similar lighting scenario. And if you sign up for the Patreon, you get access to my podcast. There's four episodes so far. Each episode is getting better than the last one and you get access to before and afters and other exclusive contents. So link in the description on this video to sign up for the Patreon and get that first exclusive step-by-step -step editing video that shows you how I create my images for Instagram. So back to the vlog. So this is kind of our general setup. We're gonna have the shoes like this. We're gonna have some of the other jean logos popping through, the Subi logo, the Nudie Jeans logo. I'm gonna move this around a little bit and try to like get maybe this hole up closer in here. I'm gonna adjust things as I see it in camera, but this is kind of the general vibe we're going for. So as for the camera I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the Nikon D810 to shoot these because I'm using the Nikon D780 to record the video. Right now I have a 20 millimeter on here. The reason I'm using a 20 millimeter is I wanna try to get the back background to look really wide and the shoes to look as small as possible so a wide angle is going to kind of create that effect. Ideally you want to use like a size 9 for shoe product photography like this but right now this shoe is a size 12 which is going to be a little bit of an issue because it's so big which means I need to have a bigger backdrop so I'm going to have to adjust our backdrop a lot here, move these jeans around, move the jacket around and try to make it wide enough and lay wide enough to give us those layers and depth that we want and by doing that we're going to be able to create the illusion that this size 12 shoe is actually a lot smaller than it actually is because the 12 is it's pretty big but I'll be able to make it work all right bet so check that off the list next up we got these orange guys the first thing I think about when I look at these is the color orange and then I think about the oranges that I have downstairs in my refrigerator which kind of goes with the whole stay at home theme of the last video now in the last video I did use this couch as a prop and a backdrop for one of the photos but it's just too perfect for this one. I gotta do it again. The blue with the orange, it just looks too good together. So I'm gonna run and get those oranges. We're gonna set up a composition that looks good. Also, we have this pair of orange Nike socks. So yeah, look at that together. Those plus some mini oranges. This is gonna look solid. So I'm liking this composition right here. Got a few more oranges that I'm probably gonna add in throughout the photo. This is how it's gonna look on Instagram. It's gonna be a four by five, so it'll be at this perspective, but this is looking good. Let's uh, knock this one out. For the next two shots, we're gonna use the 85 millimeter F 1.4 instead of the 20, gonna get some more like telephoto type shots. So next up, I'm gonna go outside to shoot these. I'm gonna put these on my own feet because I'm wearing black jeans. I thought they matched really well and it just so happens that a wall near my house is also gray. So I was like, hey, let's just go outside and do it there. I'm gonna put the camera on a timer mode, put these on my own feet and just stand there and uh, hit a few little poses, you know what I'm saying? And these should come out fire. I love the way the colors 
colors pop on these, they're gonna really pop against the gray and gray. Yo, I really like the way these shoes look on feet. I am tempted to get them for myself. So something I tried off camera, I made the first set of photos and I didn't like the way they looked with the laces tied. So I unlaced them like this and I was able to get the tongue really popping up like that. And I think it highlighted the shoe a lot better. So that's always something to keep in mind with product photography is what makes the product look best. And even though conventionally you'd wear these shoes tied, in this case, because of the design of them, wearing them unlaced with the laces slack like this actually looks a lot better. So the next shoe we have to shoot, that is quite a mouthful to say shoes we have to shoot, is these all white Air Force Ones right here. Now instantly when I see a white pair of Air Force Ones, I think icy. So we're going to take that little phrase, that little thought of mine, and make it into a literal photo. So don't tell my wife I'm doing this, but this is the setup right here. We got the water decanter thing. I don't know what you call that. Got a few cups of water, got the ice down here. It's gonna add a really cool foreground with the reflection of the shoe going through kind of like that. It's gonna look good. All right, that last photo, that was so much fun to clean up. Water got everywhere because ice melts. Who would have thought? So I'm pretty much getting to my time limit, so I'm not gonna do these today, and I'm not gonna do these today either. I'm gonna sit down and edit all this stuff, and while I'm editing, I'm gonna show you some of the other photos that I've made while doing product photos at home. This is stuff that I did over the course of the last few weeks. Let me get this edited, and uh, we'll talk about it. All right, so everything came out great today. I think my favorite on the day is this one right here, the blue Nike, what are these? 270 React, I can't remember the name of these, on the denim. Just like the way it looks, I think it's a very effective photo if it was in an email campaign. If you open an email and you have a bunch of jeans, you see these shoes, you'll think, hey, those, those shoes probably look really good with jeans, I'm gonna get a pair. And the idea here is to help the client sell shoes. And that kind of leads us into what I wanted to talk about at the end of this video, which is some tips for y'all if product photography is something you wanna get into. Cause I'm sure a lot of you are watching this video thinking, how did this guy get to do this? How can I do that? And my biggest piece of advice is one, be in the world that you eventually wanna make photos in. People see this video and the last video I made and think this kind of just happened by luck. It was just a client that I found. When in reality, I was actually shopping at this particular shoe store long before I even started doing photography as a potential career. I was just collecting sneakers. Sneakers is something I've always loved, always enjoyed, and it's just something that I know a lot about. And it just so happened through proximity, through shopping at stores, meeting people in the shoe world, it being an interest of mine, it eventually led to me making money, making photos of it. So I would say be involved in the world that you eventually want to make product photography in. And it doesn't have to be shoes. It can be something like going out and doing nature lifestyle photos, doing nature product photography photos. Actually be someone who goes out in nature, meet people in this world, meet brands who create the things in this world that you like. Just be a part of the world and culture of the thing you eventually want to make photos of. And the second thing that you should probably do is create a proof of concept and create a portfolio for yourself completely for free. If you're in that world, if it's something you're interested in, it should make sense for you to make photos of this particular thing just because you're there. Proximity. If you're going out hiking, you're going out with friends, make some mock product photos, make some photos of their water bottles, make some photos of their shoes, so their hats, whatever they're wearing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just try to create the best free work you can. Start learning about product photos. I did the same thing with shoes before I ever did this as a job. I would get a new pair of sneakers in and say, yo, I think I want to put these on my tumbler and I would try my best to create tumblers. Shout out to them. That is a, an old school reference, but I would get the shoes in, I'd make photos of them and I would just try to improve and make the best set of photos I could. And eventually when I did get approached about a paid opportunity doing this, I had all these photos that I'd made over the years to show them. I know a lot of people who've done this over the years, the thing that starts as their hobby and their interest eventually turns into the thing that's getting them paid and making them money. So that's all I want to talk about today. Hope you all enjoyed the video. And remember product photography, even if you're not trying to do it as a job, make money with it. It's a great way to learn photography, especially being at home like we are right now. You can learn a lot about lighting. You can learn a lot about compositions, a lot about colors, a lot about editing, and it's all just 
small and in your house and it's not too overly complicated. So give it a shot, try out some of the ideas in today's video and if you post anything on social media, feel free to tag me in it. I will look for it. It's hard for me to catch everybody, but I look out for y'all and I will catch y'all next time.